In the past few years, we have seen changes to the world wealth ranking. We've seen top names switch positions like Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos. Today, we're going to talk about the richest man in Asia, Gautam Adani. How he went from being a college dropout to one of the richest men in the world. Part 1. The son of a textile merchant. Gautam Adami was born on the 24th of June in 1962 to his parents Shantilal Adani and Shantaben Adani. He was born in Ahmedabad, Gujarat, in India, and he was raised alongside his seven siblings. Gautam's family migrated from the northern part of Gujarat, and his father provided for the family through his small textile merchandise. Hoping for a brighter future for his children, Shantilal Adani ensured that his children were educated. Even though Gautam's father insisted on education for his children, Gautam developed a passion for trading. This influence came from watching his father, who was a merchant. However, he was not interested in the family business. Gautam attended school at the Sheth Chimanlal Nagandas Vidyalaya School in Ahmedabad. After he graduated, he excelled in university, studying to get a bachelor's degree in commerce. While Gautam was studying, he couldn't ignore his desire to practice trading rather than just studying about it in class. He visited Gujarat's Kandla port while he was a student, and his dream expanded. Gautam decided he would also build something like Gujarat's Kandla port or something bigger. After his second year at the university, he dropped out to follow his passion. Gautam was still a teenager when he dropped out of school, but he was inspired to set up a business for himself. However, Gautam wanted to do something different from selling textiles which his father had done for most of his life. His family was economically challenged by having to take care of seven children and Gautam, so there was no one to contribute to his dream. Gautam, however, had his eyes on a business he was sure would change his life. And that was the diamond brokerage business. Part 2. Life After College The diamond business in Mumbai was thriving at the time, so Gautam felt that was the place he needed to be. In 1978, Gautam moved to Mumbai to work as a diamond sorter for Mahendra Brothers after dropping out of college as a teenager. He worked for them for two to three years before he understood how to thrive in the market. Gautam was young and an amateur but he was able to master the tricks of the business in just three years. He used his knowledge of the diamond trade to set up his diamond brokerage firm. Although it was his first business, Gautam thrived even more than in older firms. When Gautam was 20 years old, he made his first million from selling diamonds. Afterward, he returned to inform his family of his success. Gautam continued the diamond brokerage business, but his next breakthrough came when his elder brother, Mahasuk Adani, purchased a plastic factory in Ahmedabad. Mahasuk called his brother back from Mumbai and asked him to work as an operations manager for his plastic factory. In 1981, Gautam accepted his brother's offer and returned to Ahmedabad. He considered his new job as his gateway to the global trade arena. He joined his brother's firm and began importing polyvinyl chloride to India. However, Gautam did not focus on the imports for his brother's business alone. In 1985, he started importing primary polymers for small-scale industries, adding global trading skills to his portfolio while in his early 20s. Part 3. The Creation of the Adani Group In 1988, Gautam started a commodity import and export firm called Adani Exports. The company presently goes by the name of Adani Enterprises under its holding company, Adani Group. When Gautam started the firm, he wanted to focus on imports and exports of agricultural and power-related commodities. But a few years later, the economy of India began to change. In 1991, India was in a macroeconomic crisis, and to get out of it, the finance minister Manmohan Singh proposed new economic reforms for the country called the Economic Liberalization Policies. The new policy abolished industrial licensing, reduced import tariffs, and encouraged foreign investment and privatization of various industries. These changes were very favorable towards Gautam's new company, Adani Enterprises. 
Gautam began expanding his businesses into the trading of metals, textiles, and agro-products. In 1994, the government of Gujarat announced managerial outsourcing of the Mundra port. They invited private companies to bid for the contract, and Gautam saw this as an opportunity to achieve his teenage dream. Gautam's visit to the Mundra port started his dream of being a successful entrepreneur, even if it meant dropping out of college. He applied for his company, Adani Enterprise, to get the contract, and in 1995, Gautam got the contract. Adani Enterprises built the first jetty on the Mundra port. It was originally operated by the Mundra port and Special Economic Zone, but the operations were later transferred to Adani ports. Gautam's influence and economic intelligence led Mundra Port to become the largest private multi-port operator in India. The port has the capacity to handle close to 210 million tons of cargo per annum. Following his accomplishments with Mundra Port, Gautam expanded to another promising industry. In 1996, Adani Group and Gautam founded a power company called Adani Power. Adani Power currently has a thermal power plant with a capacity of 4,620 megawatts. This makes the Adani Power Plant the largest private thermal power produced in India. This expansion was a tremendous step in him becoming the richest man in Asia. In 2006, Adani Power went from distributing power to the power generation business. Between 2009 and 2012, Adani acquired Abbott Point Port in Australia and Carmichael and Coal Mine in Queensland. These places serve as an expansion for the Adani Group, increasing Gautam's wealth and assets immensely. Part 4. Close Encounters with Death While Gautam was growing as an entrepreneur, his wealth got him fame and recognition in the country. He is also well known as a philanthropist, constantly giving back to society. Gautam didn't come from a wealthy family, but he was very successful at a young age. Unfortunately, his success was noticed by the wrong crowd as well. In 1998, Gautam was reportedly kidnapped at gunpoint on his way out of a club in Ahmedabad. He was kidnapped and had to pay a ransom. The second newer death experience came years after the Adani group expanded to some parts of the world. In November 2008, that was a terrorist attack by Islamist terrorists from Pakistan in Mumbai. About 10 terrorists carried out 12 coordinated shootings and bombing attacks for four days. This attack killed 175 people and 300 people were injured. Gautam was in Mumbai within the four days of the attack. One of the terrorist shootings occurred at the seafront Taj Hotel he was staying at. Gautam was at the dining hall when the terrorists held people hostage. A staff of the hotel helped him to survive by hiding him from the terrorists taking people hostage. The staff hid Gautam in the hotel's basement until the attacks were over. When he was giving his testimony to the authorities, Gautam said he saw the militants enter the building from the table he was sitting at. Part 5. Becoming the Richest Man in Asia In 2008, Gautam first appeared as a billionaire on Forbes with an estimated fortune of 9.3 billion. But now his fortune is 15 times greater than that. Before Gautam became the richest man in Asia, he first achieved the status of Senti Billionaire, joining seven other iconic people in the world. But how did he make that much money in a little over a decade? In May 2020, the Solar Energy Corporation of India had a contract bid worth 6 billion US dollars. Adani Solar, a subsidiary of Adani Group, won the bid. The 8,000 megawatt photovoltaic power plant project given to Adani Solar is expected to establish 2,000 megawatts of additional solar cell and module manufacturing capacity. This was quickly followed by Gautam's swift decision to gain a 74% stake in Mumbai International Airport. The Mumbai International Airport is the second busiest airport in India after the airport in Delhi. Adani Power is now a major source of income for the Adani Group, and Gautam makes necessary investments to put the brand ahead of all competitions. In November 2021, the Adani Group invested $70 billion in the new green energy business. 
This investment is to boost the success of Adani Green and Adani Solar. In July 2022, Gautam disclosed details of his previous investment in green energy. Adani Green will build three giant solar factories, an electrolyzer to make green hydrogen, and it will have wind turbine plants. All his wealth and investment led Gautam to surpass Mukesh Abani and become the richest man in Asia. In August 2022, Gautam Adani was named the third richest person in the world by Fortune. Part 6. Becoming the Second and Third Richest Man in the World In January 2020, his net worth was about $10 billion. Between 2020 and half of 2022, Gautam's wealth has galloped over 13 times. Gautam is now the richest man in Asia and the third richest man in the world. Although it fluctuates quite a lot between the Bernou family, Jeff Bezos, and Gautam Adani. He even briefly surpassed the second richest man in the world, billionaire Jeff Bezos. On the 16th of September, 2022, Forbes' real-time billionaire profiles recorded Gautam went past Amazon's Jeff Bezos to claim the second spot. Gautam was locked in a close contest with French businessman Bernard Arnault for the second spot. However, his fortune increased to over $155 billion, earning him the position of the second richest man in the world. Later that same day, it came down to $152 billion, and Arnaud has gone past Adani again to settle in the second position. Do you think Gautam Adani has a chance at being the richest man in the world? Do you think he will lose his position as the richest man in Asia? Comment below. Be sure to like this video and check out the other videos on our channel.